Parkinson's disease, with its distinctive shake and shuffle. Harlan Usher, a 57-year-old former teacher, was diagnosed with Parkinson's six years ago. Despite taking three dopamine-based drugs, he'd shuffle, stumble, then freeze, panic, and be rooted to the spot. But now a new therapy, designed to trick his brain, has made him walk tall again. It's made me aware that I do have a brain, that um, I think that one's self-esteem suffers greatly. I got to this stage where I wasn't coping socially or otherwise. But that's all over now thanks to these strips of paper. In Melbourne, Australia, a team of doctors and physiotherapists have come up with a revolutionary way of getting around the main symptoms of Parkinson's. This involves using walking cues, the lines laid out on the floor, to trick the brain. In Parkinson's, a part of the brain called the basal ganglia stops working. This is the part that organizes movement. When it goes wrong, movements go awry. But it doesn't mean the patients couldn't still execute those movements if they use a different part of their brain. We're tricking the brain into action, basically. We're, we're, we're fooling the brain into achieving something that otherwise it would not be able to perform. The therapy teaches a new set of routines to override old ways that no longer work. It was devised by physiotherapist Professor Meg Morris from clinical trials she conducted at the Kensington Centre in Melbourne. If a person has what's called gait hypokinesia, where their footsteps shorten down and their walking pattern slows, then if we find if we put white cues down on the ground, they can activate the normal footstep pattern. And for some people that can be very liberating. That can literally mean the difference between walking or not walking. Painstakingly, patients are taught how to use other parts of their brain to execute their actions. If you can imagine the size of your step, mm -hmm. then you can step over these strips, but then you can imagine that, that stride length in your mind's eye for when those strips aren't there. Off you go. These lessons have changed Harlan's life. I wanted a fresh start. And this is what the pro program gave me. The basic message I got out of it is that you cannot depend upon medication. You cannot wait for a miracle. It brought home to me how much I should be or could be in charge of my situation myself. And that I need to just tune out of what's going on around me and tune into my own actions. Previous clinical observations and research had shown that the Parkinson's walk was not an absolute paralysis. Meg Morris and her team showed that visual cues could restore normal step length and speed. They used a stride analyzer to measure whether the method was working, monitoring the length and the height of the steps before and after training. Results were impressive. So there's two things the cues do. One is that they might provide the visual stimulus to trigger the brain to release the large movements. But secondly, they enable the person to learn what's called an attentional strategy to bypass the defective basal ganglia. Sunday, Saturday, Friday, go. Sunday, Saturday, Friday. People with Parkinson's have great difficulty doing two things at the same time. For instance, walking and talking. Here it's all, all mapped out for you and as we go up this path, you can see all the lines there too. So off you go, concentrate on your walking, we won't talk. It's not possible to always avoid doing two things at the one time. One will have to run through the faulty basal ganglia and therefore will become very small and very slow whilst you concentrate on the other task. The process is hard, gruelling even. All right, we'll just stop here and we'll turn around and go back the other way. What's the matter, Harlan? No one said it would be easy but it does help. To say that I keep going all the time would be incorrect. There are times when I will come against obstacles. There are times that I will get into an almost panic stage, but what I do then, I will stop. 
I will gather my thoughts, take a few deep breaths and try and start again. It gave me back a degree of independence. Simply going to the pub used to be an ordeal for Harlan. I'm sure people, when they saw me, they assumed that I, I, would, I had the DTs or something. I suppose that part of one's fear for me used to be almost the embarrassment of going out. Thanks to this training, those days are over for Harlan. The queuing technique can also help Parkinson's patients with activities other than walking and freezing. There's a condition called micrographia in people with Parkinson's where the handwriting becomes miniature. Jill Scott had just this problem. Only in her early 40s, Parkinson's had affected her voice, her walk and her handwriting. If you provide the person with lined paper and say carefully think about writing large, topping, uh, touching the top and the bottom of the uh, lines, they can in fact generate the large strokes. Even bigger. The technique has made Jill's handwriting large Even enough to be more legible. Further research is needed into how this works. We need to do further research to confirm exactly which parts of the brain takes over. But we think the frontal cortical regions of the brain probably uh, take over or compensate for the defective basal ganglia. Research continues too into other automatic processes of the brain. For example, we're looking at how the brain controls turning. Turn around for me. We do it every day. But we don't know how the brain organises that, nor do we know how that becomes disturbed in Parkinson's. But Harlan is more interested in seeing that the method does work oh, so than in I'm finding sorry. out why and how it does. I don't know what makes my brain work. I suppose it's somewhat like a light switch. I'm only interested in getting the light on. I'm not interested really in how electricity works. Having seen that I can do things, I now have the confidence to do them.